This is the first time on television that a real thing like this has been in operation. <coughs> Let me just show you what's inside it. It's evacuated, so this outer thing here is just to protect me if the thing explodes while I'm talking to you, and you, of course, as well. Now, at the front, we've got the alpha particle gun. And it shoots the alpha particles at this target. It's a wafer-thin target of gold, the very same stuff that Rutherford's team used themselves all those years ago. Now, most of the alpha particles we expect will pass straight through, so we've got a detector out here that will pick them up. But some of them, if the positive charge is indeed concentrated in the centre of the atom, could be detected by a thing out here at a much larger angle. What we can do is vary the position of this one and see what happens as we do so. Now, most of the alpha particles go shooting straight through, and on the dials at the bottom here, we're keeping count. The bottom dial shows you how many alpha particles are being detected out at the front, the ones that just pass straight through without anything happening. And already, nearly 400,000 have been detected in the forward direction, just shooting through. The bell that you hear ringing is each time something is detected by this fellow at the side. It's such a rare event, we've got the bell there to let you know. Now the point of this is that if the atom had just been a diffuse ball of charge everywhere, nothing would ever bounce back. The fact that any bounce back at all is the key. That was the genius that Rutherford had to realise it was the once in a blue moon that the bell rang that was showing that the positive charge is concentrated in the middle and occasionally when by chance the alpha makes the direct hit, when the red ping pong ball hits the football head on and it bounces back and we can detect it in this backward direction. Now we'll leave this thing running. At the moment the score is four in the backward and 536,000 in the forward. But it's the four in the backward that are the crucial ones. And occasionally the bell will ring, and when it does, you will know that here in the theatre, an alpha particle has been scattered by the nucleus in the centre of an atom. You are seeing it proved, or hearing it proved, right here and now. Great. <laughs> These sort of things happen totally by chance. I, I was terrified that I would speak for 20 minutes, nothing would happen, and then like number 11 buses, three rings would go when I didn't want them. But there you see it, or hear it. So, as a result of this, we've established, or Rutherford and his team have established, that the atom has got its positively charged concentrated right in the middle. And that picture has survived right through to the present day. And this is what it looks like. Bippin, can you show us this beautiful model of the atom that you've made and give it a twirl? If you bring the lights down so we can get the full glory of this thing in the theatre. There's the positive charge, the nucleus, red in the middle and the negatively charged electrons whirling around on the outside. Do you give it a twirl? There you get a feeling for it. And that picture of the atom, the nuclear atom, has survived 80 years. That is what we now know to be the case. Discovered all that time ago. Thank you, Mivin, for that beautiful model. Of course, the question I haven't told you is, but how small is that charge in the middle? And that is where Rutherford's real genius came into play. By the rarity of the ice cream bell going off, compared to the frequency of the thing shooting straight through, you may already have had a feeling that the positive charge can't be very big. But Rutherford, by a very simple calculation, showed how small it really is. What we've got here from the Cambridge University Library are the two crucial pages from Rutherford's notebooks where he first realised how small 
the nucleus in his atom really is. His writing isn't the neatest thing in the world, but forgive him a few things. In here is the one time in the whole of this story I'm going to show you an equation. Another alpha particle strikes just on cue. <laughs> what he was interested in here were the rare occasions when the alpha particles bounced right back. They came shooting in and were turned around in their tracks. Why do they stop and get turned around? They come shooting in, they're being repelled, sent back where they came from, and for a moment, they come to a halt. Because at that moment, the speed, the energy they started with, has been exactly balanced by the force pushing them away. And this is what his equation says. On the right-hand side, is the amount of force pushing them away. On the left-hand side is the energy his bullet started with, the half mv squared. And he's going to weigh those two against each other at the moment they come to a stop. And so he takes this up this side and that up that side and that down there. The higher mathematics is all done. He knows everything on the right-hand side and he's going to put the numbers in and work out what this distance is. How close in does that little alpha particle get before it's turned around, because that's going to be a measure of how big that nucleus actually is. So you turn the pages of the book. On the next page, you see this is genuine when he makes mistakes and crosses them out. Not like you or me who erase it and try to get our alpha plus for neat and tidy work. Down here, you see something which the younger members of the audience might not recognize. This is long division. <laughs> and he makes another mistake, but that's not the important thing. Here is the crucial thing. That distance, the measure of the size of the positive charge that we now call the nucleus, is a millionth of a millionth of a centimetre. Now at that moment, Rutherford realises that he's onto something. And his excitement, you can almost see it, because his writing becomes almost totally illegible. <laughs> In fact, it's only recently I've found out what the second word here is. Let's see if you can read it before I can. Since something radius of atom is of the order of a hundred millionth of a centimetre to be compared with the million millionth of a centimetre. It is seen that the distance of approach of the charge centre is very small compared with the radius of the atom. That is the point. Rutherford has discovered that the relative size of his positive charge is minute compared to the size of the atom. Now this is really amazing for several reasons. One of which is that at that time, at the beginning of the century, when Rutherford is doing this experiment, or at least Geiger and Mars and his assistants are doing it, but Rutherford being the clever guy got the credit, this works marvelously, just when I need it. What he has done is shown, first of all, that even that atoms exist. That second word is probably. Since probably the radius of the atom is he was even aware they didn't understand everything and the uncertainty was there. He has shown that atoms really exist and also that the positive charge is trapped in that little bit in the middle. And that's why he got so excited. And it's from that we now have our picture of the atom which has survived to the present day. Can I give you an idea for the feeling of the relative size of that positive charge in the middle and the whole thing? Well, let's scale it up. Here, for golf fans, with their suntan cream, is a long fairway in a golf course. You will hit the ball here. After several shots, you'll get about here. If you're like me, after several more shots, you will land in the water. And eventually, you'll get it over to where you're trying to reach. That little flag may be 400 meters away. Now, the size of the ball that you're trying to get into that little hole, relative to the length of the whole of that fairway, is like the size of the nucleus compared with the radius of the atom. In all three dimensions, you begin to get a feeling that this is remarkably small, this nucleus in the middle, the positive charge. That's one way of demonstrating it. Anybody here support Peterborough United? Am I the only one? <laughs> well, this is close to my heart. I begin to feel that we supporters are as rare as those backscattered alpha particles. If I put this football in the middle of Peterborough, this would be like the nucleus in the atom. If you live in a city of 100,000 people, this football, compared to your city, is like the nucleus in that atom. 